I think we're live now. Welcome to this live Q&A here on YouTube. Uh, this is all about intermittent fasting, weight loss. Uh, the name of this channel is Six Miles to Supper, um, the way I lost weight. I uh, lost 80 pounds with intermittent fasting uh, and walking six miles a day. I walk at a slow pace and I eat whatever food I want during the eating window. Uh, and so uh, I got down to my goal weight. Uh, my initial goal weight was uh, 158 and I got down to that in uh, 2016, November 2016. And, uh, and then I took like a year uh, just to maintain. And then I lost another, um, like another about 15, 17 pounds. I got down to 142 and then just decided to maintain in the 140. So it was a total loss of 80 pounds and uh, I maintain in the 140s now. Uh, so, um, my name's Kayla Cox, by the way, I should say that. Um, so if you have questions about weight loss, you know, if you're having trouble with intermittent fasting, anything like that, just uh, pop it into the chat and then I will do my best to answer it. I am not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I am just someone who has been there and done that and got the t-shirt. Um, and I um, struggled, you know, just for, just for that way you have some context. I struggled my entire life with my weight from the time I was, you know, like a little kid, like about six years old. That was the first time I remember uh, my doctor put me on a diet it and um and, uh, and then just throughout my childhood and into adulthood just struggle with my weight you know dieting you know getting the weight off then having it come back on that whole thing that was my that was my normal until I was about 30 <laughs> so um so there you go uh hi Victoria nice to see you on here um and uh, I did have a couple of uh, comments already. Uh, there was one that I think has disappeared from the chat, but uh, it was like the first question. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and answer it. Uh, so this person, their name was Anro Pelzer. And they said, hi from South Africa, which I always love hearing where everybody's from. It's uh, so neat to, to think that we're like connecting, even though that like, you're in South Africa and I'm here in Florida. Um, okay. Uh, with your motivation, I can now easily fast till 12. Oh, well, great. Uh, but I haven't lost any weight. I eat too many sweets. I want to do OMAD, but I'm scared. So please help. I'm desperate to lose. Well, Anro, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, I think this is a great question because it, it hits on a couple of different things. Um, the first one is you are, you say now you can easily fast until 12. And that is really important. The ability to fast, the practice of fasting is like the foundation. The weight loss can come later. Um, and what I mean by that is, so intermittent fasting in and of itself uh, will not help you to lose weight it, just because you're doing the fasting. What I mean by that is like, let's say you start doing a 16, eight fast. Many people lose weight on a 16, eight. They, they fast for 16 hours and they eat for eight hours, but it's perfectly possible for you to gain weight doing a 16, eight perfectly. What I mean by perfectly is just the fact of you are only eating in an eight hour window. And this is where a lot of people get tripped up. They think, well, I'm doing the, I'm, I'm obeying the window. So why is it not working? But ultimately the way, the way weight loss works in any form or fashion is that you consume less than you're burning. So, so this is really frustrating though. I know, I know that cause I've been there, done that. I've been, you know, in that place where it's like, I feel like I'm doing all the right things, but why is this not working? And when I finally really understood that it was like, okay, if at any point I am gaining weight, it means I'm eating too much. If I am, if I'm staying where I'm at, it means that I am eating just the right amount to stay where I'm at. And if I'm losing weight, then I'm, lo then I'm eating the appropriate amount in order for my body to lose weight. And that is different for everybody. And I know that's frustrating to hear because everybody's metabolism is different. Uh, you know, like some people can eat more and, and just, you know, maintain at, at a, at a weight. And some people, uh, you know, have to eat less in order to maintain at that same weight. There is a lot of variability. I think it's something like 30% uh, for, you know, as far as like just the normal human variance there. So some people can eat like 30% more than what you can eat um, and still maintain that weight. So I know that's not fair. Um, so, but the, the practice of fasting is important. It's a habit that helps you to be more disciplined with your eating, to have boundaries with food. Um, I, 
I, I personally believe that most of us who have struggled with their weight, we've had poor boundaries with food on some level. Like we've used food for other reasons other than just pure and simple hunger. And it may not seem that way. Uh, I know certainly when I was obese, I absolutely did not think I like that I really, um, that I was like an emotional eater. I really didn't think that. I thought, no, I eat just cause I'm hungry and that's all, that, that's all, like, that's all it is. Like, and I really felt like I did not eat that much food. But it was the process of intermittent fasting, being consistent with the window and just really like, like watching myself both in the fasting window and in the eating window. So especially in the fasting window, noticing how often I wanted to eat, how often I would just think, well, I would like, I'd like a snack right now. And so many times that was tied directly to my emotional state at the time. So in other words, like most of the time fasting felt really easy, but then, you know, it'd be like in the morning sometime randomly. And it would be like, wait, I'm really like, I want a snack right now. Why am I standing in the kitchen <laughs> looking for a snack? I know I don't do this right now, but I, I was wanting to snack because it was a habit. It was a habit that I had tied to. I'm stressed out right now, usually about money, but like I'm stressed out right now. So what do I do? Uh, I usually snack. And so, so you're learning stuff during the fasting window. Even if, even if right now you're not losing any weight, if you will pay attention to yourself during the fasting window, that will, that will teach you some stuff that, that can be very important. Um, and, and really helpful because once you're aware of that, that it's like, oh, okay, sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm eating just because I'm bored or I'm just eating because I'm upset right now. Uh, and food is very comforting. Food is very good at its job of like, of helping you to not feel anxious or helping you to, to fill a void, you know, like it's like, I'm bored right now. So what can you do? You can eat. Um, it can be, it can be fun in that way. And it, you know, you get like a dopamine rush. I mean, there, there are lots of things that you, that are, that make it really difficult, um, to not, so, sorry, make it difficult to eat the appropriate amount, I would say. Um, so, so then let's talk about sweets. So I eat sweets. Okay. Like I love sweets. Uh, I, I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm like, uh, I, okay. So I used to have a lot of trouble eating the right amount of sweets. What, what I mean by that, like I, I, I have a very like, my philosophy on food is basically this. You should just eat whatever food you like uh, and whatever food's available to you because not everybody has the luxury of going to the store and like picking out things that are, you know, perfectly nutritionally balanced. I mean, some people are given food. Uh, some people are in a position where they don't have control over their, their options because maybe they're, you know, they could even be a teenager or something and they just are kind of at the mercy of whatever their parents are buying. So, um, but, uh, the point is, I believe that you can lose weight and maintain a healthy weight, no matter what food you're eating. So even if that's sweets all the time, I believe you can. I mean, and the thing is processed food. Like, so in other words, when I, when I say processed food, I mean, that can really mean anything. Processed can mean like a can of green beans, but what I'm talking about is like the highly processed, like, you know, candy bars and, and chips and things that are like engineered with that bliss point. Have you ever heard of that? It's like this, um, thing that scientists have found where it's like the maximum amount of enjoyment. Like when you put in, you know, this chip is going to give, it's going to put your dopamine levels at this bliss point. And that's really only present really in like these more, uh, pro processed kinds of food. So knowing that, that those, those foods are very, very pleasurable. And so it's easier to overeat on those. It doesn't mean that you must overeat. You can certainly figure out how to eat the right amount. Um, and educating yourself on a couple of things can be helpful there. Like, for example, if you, if you say, okay, I love double stuffed Oreos, right? Um, okay. Cause I do, I love double stuffed Oreos. I do. I, I, I still totally love them. I had some last night actually. Um, but they have, I want to say it's like 50 calories each, right? I, 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 somebody can double check me on that. But, uh, the point is you can, if you're not really aware of like how many calories that is, it's easy to just eat a lot of those and kind of think, well, you know, I didn't really eat that many cookies, but you actually consumed a lot. It's easier to consume a lot more calories when it's something like that, where it's really sweet and, uh, and it's like 
prepackaged food. I, I, I have found it's easier to eat the right amount when it's like homemade. And, and that's kind of a, it's not a hard and fast rule I have for myself, but it is a general pattern that you could observe in me is that generally uh, the sweets in my house are homemade by me or my, one of my kids. Like we don't tend to buy a lot of prepackaged food mainly because of budget. But, um, but in, in general, I think it's been a good habit that it's it, because it takes effort because it's like, okay, if I want a cookie, then I have to actually go, you know, go through the trouble of going into the kitchen and, you know, laying out the butter, let it come to room temperature. And then actually to, to put all that effort in to making the cookies, there's a time delay and you appreciate it more, uh, once you've actually do it. So, uh, all that to say, uh, those are easier to stop on. I find it, like, because you just, I don't know. I, I think it has something to do with the fact that they're, they're not, you know, bliss point kind of foods. They're just, they're good and they're enjoyable. Um, but they're, they're not engineered, uh, to, to make it so this like, because food scientists, you know, like the, these scientists that are, you know, working for these companies, they want it to be like, you can't stop, you know, like you, they want you to like, what is it with uh, the Lay's motto, the potato chip, it used to be something like you can't eat just one, bet you can't just eat one or something like that. Um, and the idea is, you know, they, they want you to keep eating because their profit, <laughs> their profits go up. The more you eat, uh, the more profits there are. Um, and there's nothing wrong with making a profit, but I'm just saying, if you know that it can, it just for our, for, for, let's see, what's the, that, what's the word? Uh, forewarned is forearmed. So, um, so knowing that about sweets, sorry, I got a little, that little thing has to be open for me to be able to get some water. Um, so another thing that can happen here with sweets is that because like if, if you have struggled with your weight for, I would say like a more significant amount of time, um, then there's likely this battle going on in your head because you're thinking, oh, it's like off limits. Like, oh, if it's sweets, then it's off limits. And then you can kind of, they become more alluring and then it's harder to stop, especially if you have this kind of like in your mind think, well, I shouldn't have any sweets. Like that's bad. And then you do have sweets and then it can be like, oh, I feel so guilty because I'm eating this, but it's so good and I love it. And it's, it's this back and forth that can happen. And then that makes the whole process, you know, kind of stressful and, and it's just not good. So I found that when I really decided everything is on the menu, nothing's off limits, I can have sweets whenever I want them. It was like I just had stopping power. Um, and that wasn't like 100% of the time. That was like, I, I never overdid it again. That's not what I'm saying. But it was just like an overall change that I noticed in myself. So um, so take that for what it's worth. But uh, I think with practice, you'll find that you will get to that point where you do eat just the right amount, where you when you stop, you feel full. And the scale is doing what you want it to. That's really the, that's the more important thing is that the scale is moving down. So, um, so I would say just keep going with the, the practice of fasting, focus a lot on when you're eating, why are you eating? A lot of times we're eating for reasons that have nothing to do with hunger. Um, and a good way to, to kind of suss that out is to wait. Like if you feel hungry, just wait a few minutes and, and just see, you know, like, uh, like I, I remember uh, when I was in um, doing more of a window, eventually I got to OMAD, uh, which OMAD is great, uh, one meal a day. Uh, and you say you want to get to, you know, to do that. Uh, but you can totally lose weight in all these different, you know, configurations, 16, a one meal a day. It really kind of depends on what your preferences actually are. And mo more importantly than that, what will fit in your life, what works well with your family life, the, the rhythms of your day, um, knowing all those things, it, it just, it, it's, it's not a great fit for everyone, but if it does fit, then, uh, it, it can, uh, it can, it can be really good. Um, so I hope that helps you and Rome. Uh, Kathy Crawford said, uh, hi Kayla, I have two of your books. I listen to them as I walk in the morning and I forgot to put my books over here, but I do have two books out, um, uh, about weight loss, the laid back guide to intermittent fasting and also, uh, overcoming weight loss obstacles. So, uh, you can uh, check those out on, um, Amazon if you are so inclined. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that uh, you enjoy listening to them. I, I did record them for uh, Audible, so um, you can uh, listen to the audiobooks if you prefer to do it that way. Um, 
I'm glad I'm joining you on your morning walk. Also, I do a podcast. I should, I kind of uh, failed to mention that. I do a podcast. I have been posting them on here, but I think I'm going to go back to just keeping the two separate. So having an audio podcast uh, is through Libsyn, so you can find it on any podcast app that you uh, that you may enjoy. Um, and then uh, my YouTube videos just being YouTube videos. Um, I, th I think I'll be more consistent with putting the podcast out if I go back to doing that. So. Uh, so there you go. So if you like listening to the sound of my voice, that's one, one other way to do so. Um, okay. Let's see. I think, uh, we got another question here. Tina says, hi, Kayla. I'm in a place where these couple of weeks I am hungry in the morning up till about nine uh, to three o'clock and I eat breakfast and lunch. I can skip dinner easily. So I have a six hour eating window. Okay. So that's interesting. So let's see. So, uh, let's see, you're, you're, are, are you asking how to deal with, let's see, I'm trying to figure out if you have a question or if you're just telling me what you're doing. Let's see. I'm in place with these couple of weeks. I'm hungry in the morning up to, uh, up to nine to three o'clock. And so you eat breakfast and lunch. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I think I see what you're saying. So what you're doing is you're basically eating in that, that window because that's when you naturally are feeling hungrier and then you're skipping dinner. I think that, and so that's a really interesting, um, uh, like pattern because m most people do it the other way, right? Most people are like, I don't even want breakfast. So, you know, the, it, that, that was how I did it. I would like push breakfast further and further. Cause I felt like that was the easiest meal to, to, uh, push out. Eventually I got to the point where I was like, ah, I don't really need lunch either. Um, but you've done it kind of the opposite way. So that, that's cool that, um, that, that has worked out well for you. Um, and so I guess you, I guess what you're saying is you're really not feeling hungry in the evenings. I've not really ever experimented with that particular, like the idea of breakfast, lunch, and then just skipping dinner because we have family dinner. Like it's, it's like the one meal where we can all sit down, uh, me and the kids and my husband. And so that's like, that's like an important part of my day. But I would certainly say, uh, that if, if things were different, I can definitely see how a nine to three schedule could, could work because there've been a few times where I've done more of that kind of a thing where we kind of had our big meal in the, in the afternoon and then I didn't eat supper. And I do enjoy that. Like, I, I feel like I sleep really well during that time. Oh, Tom, uh, thank you very much for, um, for the super thanks or the, uh, yeah, super chat. Uh, that's awesome. You're doing great. Oh, uh, well, and uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the content. So, so thank you very much for that, uh, generous, uh, thing. I wonder what you do. Tom's turbo garage. I keep meaning to, to see what it is you do on your channel. Uh, I wonder what kind of garage stuff my husband and I have, Oh, we bought this. I don't know. It's not a lemon, but it, like our, we do the Dave Ramsey thing. So we buy, uh, like we don't go into debt. That That's our, that's our overarching rule for ourselves. So we had, we had a couple of car accidents, not our fault, uh, one right after the other. Anyway, the last time our car got totaled. So then we've had to, like when we bought this car, we just did not know what we were getting into. So many repairs and stuff that we've had to do. We've just been learning on YouTube, which I, this one reason I love YouTube so much is because it's like, if you have a problem, you know, like YouTube, you can usually find the answer on YouTube, like how to solve it with, with like our car stuff. It's been like, we've been able to, in almost every case, figure out exactly how to do it. Like with the, with the model, like the same, you know, model year and same everything. So, uh, so anyway, so, so I wonder what kind of car work you do there, Tom. Um, uh, you can plug your, <laughs> plug your channel if you want to in the, in the chat. Um, let's see. All right, Kim. Oh, Kim Weaver. Hello. Uh, uh, I'm glad you enjoy the lives. Um, let's see. Ah, well, thank you. And thank you, Tina, for, um, for the, for the kind comments. Y'all are, y'all are very, very sweet. Um, okay. Let's see. I, there were some other questions, uh, that I, so I don't answer YouTube comments, uh, not because I don't want to answer comments, but just because they sometimes, well, the, sometimes they can be really negative. Um, and, and I just, I cannot, uh, get myself to, to go into there with like the, I know it's more of a mindset thing, but you kind of have to, in the comment section, 
you, you almost have to be antisocial. <laughs> like you have to have this mindset of like, it doesn't matter what anybody says um, in order to like, to get yourself to go or go in there and not be affected by like negativity. So I have a hard time with that. I tend to be like, I take things to heart. Uh, so I don't tend to go into the comment section, except for there's this feature on the back end where you can actually just filter out by questions. And, um, so I, I do have a few, uh, that, uh, people have asked, uh, and so I'll go through and, uh, answer those. So, uh, somebody asked, uh, Anita Rampal asked, um, when you eat OMAD, uh, do you eat in an hour long window, uh, or, or what are you doing exactly? And this is a really good question because a lot of people have this way of talking about OMAD. And I, and I, at first I thought, well, obviously, you know, everybody's, when we're saying OMAD, everybody's talking about the same thing. That's not necessarily true. There are some people when they say OMAD, what they really mean is more like a couple of hours of eating, like what, you know, they would think is like, well, that's really only enough to eat a meal in. Um, when I am talking about OMAD, I really mean literally one meal. So, uh, so I sit down to the meal, uh, we sit there and, and we talk and we eat and I would say most of the time I'm done eating within 20 minutes, maybe 30, but most of the time I'm, 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 I tend to be a faster eater, although I'm making progress on that. I'm, I'm learning how to slow down. Um, but so when I say OMAD, I really do mean I sit down once to eat. I will eat the food. I will get seconds if I want. I eat off a, I will show this a eight inch plate. Usually I eat two platefuls. Sometimes it's one plateful though. So, you know, take that. It just kind of just depends on what we're eating. Uh, sometimes it might be even more than that. I, re I really do just, just eat to satiation. So I will just like, it, and it really depends on my activity level. Uh, you know, like what we're eating and, and all those things. Um, but that, that's what I do. So I, I sit there and I eat. So if we have, um, you know, dessert or whatever, I'll sit there, I'll have my dessert. And then I stand up from the table and I start fasting again. When I say I'm practicing OMAD, that's what I mean by that. I don't mean that it's like, oh, it's like basically two hours of eating. And so it's enough for just one meal. And that's, that's all I mean by that. Like, so, uh, it literally is one meal. Um, I have found that, you know, like that, that could, uh, I think make a difference, <laughs> you know, like, uh, because you can eat more, like, you know, like if you let food settle, then you can eat more. So, um, so if you find that you're, you know, doing OMAD, but you're practicing really more of a window, um, then you might just try doing it all at one sitting. Um, that's, that's a, an option. So, okay. Let's see. Ann Markle says any tips on how to just get started. Oh, absolutely. I keep saying the bar too high. And then, <laughs> yep. And then uh, quitting once I fail. Okay. So, uh, first of all, knowing like n you're, you're self-aware, which is really good. Cause I was not self-aware. And in the beginning, I really thought my perfectionist mindset, I thought that's a good thing to have. Like I, I was all or nothing. I was like, you know, like I've got to set the bar high and I'm, I've got, I'm, I have like an achievement kind of mindset. I, I really, uh, want to do a great job. Like if it's, if I'm going to go work out, it's going to be the hardest workout ever. Cause I need to sweat bullets. Cause I, you know, like at this point I was obese. So I was like, I gotta like, you know, kind of like punish myself. I got to punch myself for where I'm at. Um, that did not serve me well. Like it really did not. Um, I saw much better results when I finally realized that I need to be more humble <laughs> about where I was like, uh, and, and to be more, um, humble when I did mess up to, to just say, okay, like, okay. For example, like with fasting, I, I started out in a very, uh, humble mindset of like, okay, right now I'm eating all day, every day. Like I, I had no, I had no boundaries with food. It was like, if I ever feel hungry, I will eat, you know, like, and even if I'm not hungry, like I just, it's a bite here, a bite there and that kind of a thing. Um, I just didn't have any boundaries. So I said, okay, this intermittent fasting thing sounds like a possibility, uh, that might, might actually work for me. And so what I did was I said, okay, I'm not going to eat past 10 PM and I'm not going to eat before 6 AM. That was my first, that was my first intermittent fasting boundary. Okay. Most people would say that wasn't intermittent fasting because it was only, only eight hours of fasting. You were basically sleeping through it. And I would say, you're absolutely right. 
you're absolutely right, but it worked because it was, it was like a low bar of entry. Okay. And so you start out there, you start with what you can do consistently. Um, I'm reading a great book. You, you guys have probably already heard of it, but I'm going to, I'm going to pull it out. Uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear. I, I heard about this book a long time ago. It was like on my list and I just never got around to reading it, but I highly recommend it um, because so much of weight loss comes down to just habits. So much of weight gain comes down to habits, just those daily actions that you do. And over time they accumulate and they, and, and, and there are consequences. So like, he makes a really good point in there. It's like, there's this lag that happens and that's why habits are so hard to like recognize and then change. Because for example, like if you have been gaining weight and most of us, the weight just kind of, it comes on, you know, maybe it comes on quicker for some of us. Um, but it comes on gradually. It's not like one day you're thin and the next day you wake up obese. It's just like over time. And it's because you have these daily habits that are just over time, they're cumulative. And it's like, oh, you know, like I'm obese, but it, in, in the day to day, it doesn't feel that way. It's just these little habits. And so getting yourself to change the habit is difficult. Like it's, it takes effort to, to do it day in and day out when you really can't see progress. Um, and that's why a lot of people quit because it's like, it, because like, if you're just doing the little thing, the progress is going to be like almost invisible. Um, and, and then on the other hand, it, so what we do to try to prevent that, right. is like, I'm going to, I'm going to do, I, I'm going to be really like, aggressive with it. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to run 10 miles a day. And I'm going to like, I'm going to do CrossFit and I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to go keto and I'm never going to have another slice of cake again. And, and then like you do that, maybe, maybe you can hold that together for a few days, but you're probably not going to lose any weight and it's going to feel really hard. And then what do you do? You quit. So, okay. So lower the bar. Uh, here, here are some ways that I lowered the bar and I continue to lower the bar at, like, even though now I feel like I'm, I'm fairly good about like getting into good habits and, and maintaining my habits. I feel like I'm pretty good, but the way I maintain those habits is to, to remind myself that I need to lower that bar until I can do it. So what I mean by that is like, okay, um, my six mile walk, uh, I, most of the time there's very little resistance to that in, in my head. Like as far as like, I would say, I'd say about 50% of the time I'm looking forward to it, like actively, like, all right, you know, I'm going to go out there. The other, you know, the other 50% of the time, there's like a range of like, yeah, you know, like there's like a, a bit of a, hmm, you know, like there's other stuff that I maybe want to do, or it's like, I got this thing I need to take care of. So there, there are, are barriers to it. Uh, there are some days though, and these are, these are rare, but they do happen where it's like, I do not want to get out there. I don't feel like it. Like I don't feel like it today. So what do you do when you just don't feel like it? You lower the bar. You're like, well, what, what, what kind of reward can I promise you so that you'll do this thing? So like for me, there are days and I know I'm having a bad day if I do this, uh, I will watch a movie in my room while I'm walking. I don't tend to watch like TV and stuff like that on a, on a general kind of basis, but that reward, like, okay, you know, like I, I need this. And, and you might think, well, you shouldn't be able, like, you shouldn't need that reward. Well, but I do. Otherwise I won't get out there and do it. So you have to figure out like, what is the thing that will get you to do the thing? And I think, and that's actually in this book, uh, Atomic Habits, it talks about like, um, temptation, well, I can't remember what he calls it, temptation, uh, I don't know, so something like basically you tie a temptation. So something that you want to do with the habit that you're wanting to instill. And I kind of think this is how it worked with me with fasting. So it's like, how do I get myself to fast, right? How do I get myself to consistently fast and not break the window? Because I promised myself Okay. During the eating window though, you can eat whatever you want. There are no restrictions. Like you can have dessert if you want it. You can have whatever you want. Like you can eat bread, you can eat pasta. You don't have to try to be low carb or anything like that. Like you can just have whatever you want. Okay. So that, that was what I wanted, right? So it gave me the motivation to stick with the fasting. 
so, um, so those, so, so, and, uh, so I would say start really, really, really short with your fasting window and get good at that. Just, you know, what, and whatever that is, and don't be ashamed and don't like, don't care what other people are doing and what they're saying. You have to focus on you. What are you capable of? You start where you are with what you got. So, and, and don't expect results right away. That's another thing. People are like, ah, I got, like, I got to lose the weight. It feels like an emergency. I get it. I, especially like in, in 20, 2015, when I weighed myself for the first time, and I mean, I thought I was going to be on the high end. I thought like 185, um, I was 222 pounds and I was like, this is an emergency. <laughs> like I, I am obese. Like I didn't realize that. Like I wasn't just barely obese either. I was like well into the obese range and it was like, Whoa, I, I, I felt like my hair's on fire and I've got to, I've got to like get all the weight off. And I had this mindset of like five pounds a week is anything less than five pounds a week is failure. And I should be ashamed of myself if I'm not losing at least five pounds a week. So what did I do? Like anytime I wasn't losing five pounds a week, I would change what I was doing. I was like, that's not good enough. I would, I would do intermittent fasting. And I would think I didn't lose five pounds this week. So I got to combine it with something else. So what would I do? I'd make it harder. I would be like, okay, I got to work out even harder. I got to be like, more, like I got to figure out the you know macros or something like that. You know, like I would try to make it way, way harder. Um, and what did that lead to? quitting. I was like constantly quitting in 2015. It would be like, no, no more fasting. Like I'm going to, uh, like I, I wrote in, in my spreadsheet one time, uh, I'm not going to do intermittent fasting anymore. It just no, it just doesn't work, <laughs> which is crazy because like intermittent fasting, actually that, that year, that was the only thing that was working. It was just slow. I lost an average when I was actually practicing intermittent fasting, a pound a week. And that continued in 2016, even when I was doing OMAD, even when I was walking six miles a day, that was still one pound a week, but one pound a week over the course of a year is 52 pounds. Um, so again, it's like, it's hard in the moment to realize like these little habits that you're, that you're getting, even if you're not losing weight right away, you with, with intermittent fasting, you are learning discipline with your eating. Like, okay, even, even though maybe you feel hungry right now, you're not going to eat. You're going to figure out something else to do with your time. You learn like, okay, the initial signal of hunger is no reason to panic. You can hang in there until you get to your, your eating window. And then that can help you just get more disciplined with, with eating in general. Um, and then discipline. The cool thing about this is like, once you start to get disciplined with that, then you also get disciplined with other things. So it's like getting into a good, you know, habit with fasting. Okay. Then it's like, then it's easier to stop when full. And it's also easier to eat for just the right reasons and not to emotionally eat and to go out and get your walk on a consistent basis or what, whatever it is you're doing. It, it's like a positive upward spiral instead of that positive downward spiral we found ourselves on when we first decided we need to do something about our weight. So, um, okay. Uh, so hopefully that helps you, Anne. Uh, oh gosh. Oh, let's see. Okay. So one thing you just said was, um, you've been tormenting yourself over having tea with oat milk. If I allow myself uh, that I feel like all your suggestions would be super easy. I should point out, I feel like I say it all the time, but maybe I don't say it often enough. I have coffee with half and half whenever I want it in the fasting window. That has been my rule from day one, uh, because I realized like the fasting window, uh, will be very boring <laughs> otherwise. Like I, and I, and I knew myself well enough by that point to realize like, I have to think about the rest of my life. I cannot be in the mindset anymore of what can I hang in there and do for like three weeks. I mean, that was really more my mindset. Like I was always like in three weeks, like I can do this for three weeks, get, you know, like this initial weight off, you know, or something and, and you know, like do the really hard thing for like three weeks and, and, and get a bunch off. Uh, and then maybe switch it to something like easier or something, but that never worked for me. I, it was like this all or nothing mindset. So, um, so I realized like in 2016, that's when I, that's when I like wrote down a very clear, easy plan for me. And one of the things I wrote down was that I can have coffee with half and half whenever I want it in the fasting window made fasting feel super easy. I enjoyed it. Like that was the thing. Like I love the fasting windows. Like I don't, I don't care. Cause once I get to my eating window, 
I eat whatever I want. Um, I, I don't eat too much, but I just eat whatever I want. And so it, it felt, it all felt enjoyable at that point. Um, and it's amazing what one little thing, like one little thing, like having coffee with half and half can do because it's like this thing that can make the difference between sticking to the fasting window and not. And I have done, by the way, I have done fasting with uh, no coffee. I did, I've done two different five day fasts. One with black coffee, which I hate black coffee, but I, I didn't want uh, the headaches that come with uh, caffeine withdrawal on one. And the other one I did um, no coffee at all. And that, <laughs> that fast, oh my gosh, it was so difficult from a, from a standpoint of just like, there was nothing to break up the day. Like, I, I mean, yeah, I could have water, but my goodness, it was like, it, it was, it was not fun at all. And, and, it, and it gave me a glimpse into like, wow, this is what my life would be like if I had, if, if I had that rule of like absolutely nothing in the fasting window. Ah, there's my husband, everybody. That's JR. He's gonna, uh, yay, he's here. He can, he can take over the chat, which is nice because he can post links and stuff um, to all the, all the different things I've been talking about. Um, so, uh, so, so Anne, if right now you think, you know, having, uh, some tea with oat milk will help you get through the fasting window, then do it. I, I, I understand that like people, there are people, um, who advocate for a, like a, a clean fast, um, which I didn't even know what that was, by the way. Like I learned about fasting on, uh, Martin Burkan's blog, uh, lean gains, and he was basically like really laid back, like I am, I think about all this stuff. And he was like, if you like want a splash of milk in your coffee, like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about whether that breaks the fast or not. Just like go on with fasting, like do like take what you need to take and then, um, and then keep fasting. So, um, uh, so yeah, so that, so that's one thing. The other part, the starting over, the starting over is so hard. And so, uh, what is that? I think Shia, Shia, Shia LaBeouf, he basically said, if you're, if you're tired of starting over, stop quitting. I'm probably butchering that quote, but the idea is that, um, you, you got to just figure out what can you do and stick with. And so I think this really does go back to being humble. Like, not overestimating your current abilities. I believe we all have great potential. Like as far as like, yes, you, like as you go along and you build on these habits, then you do, you get, you get, you turn around one day. It's like, wow, you know, like I, you know, I, I got to OMAD, right. But if I had tried, I, I mean, I, I've thought about this a lot. Like if I had tried to go straight to OMAD, like if I knew if I had just known like, okay, all I need to do, cause I didn't even know it was an option. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but like, I just didn't like in my mind, um, I didn't know OMAD was a thing. I, I, well, I remember like when I accidentally started practicing it cause my kids had a stomach bug and I was like afraid to eat. So I, I, I like, I could not eat until like supper time. And I finally just like made myself eat and, and that the bug went on for like a week, uh, different kids getting it and stuff. And I never got sick, but I just through that week, I was like, I can only eat supper. And then I lost like five or six pounds that week. And, and I remember just thinking, Oh my goodness, like, could I just do this all the time? Cause I actually enjoyed other, uh, otherwise like how I felt and everything. And so I Googled like, can you eat one meal a day? And then, you know, I found this website that was talking about this OMAD diet thing. And I was like, like, are, is it talking about nomads? Like how they used to travel and they could make, I don't know, only eat one meal. I was really confused, but, um, I realized like, Oh, I actually can, I can, I can eat one meal a day. Uh, and, and actually that's what OMAD stands for is one meal a day. I didn't learn that until much later on, embarrassingly. Um, but the point is I have thought like, and so that I, by the way, even though I lost like six pounds that week or, you know, five, five, I think it was maybe something like 5.6. I thought, Hey, I've hit the jackpot. I'm going to be able to do that losing five pounds a week thing. But it, it actually backfired completely. I didn't lose weight for the next like six weeks, even though I was still practicing OMAD. Um, it was like my body knew like, Oh, you know, like it's, it's just going to level back out. And then, and then I went back to losing about a pound a week. So over time it just averages out. Um, so but the point is, 
if I had just tried to go straight from that, if I had gone from when I was obese, if I had just said, okay, one meal a day, that's what I'm supposed to do. And it'll absolutely work. I think the difficulty, the, the perceived level of difficulty, how, how radically that would have changed, like changed everything that I was doing. I don't think I would have stuck with it. I think it would have felt way too hard and, um, I wouldn't have enjoyed it enough. And I, I mean, I don't think I would have had success that way. So my point is you can over time get there, just, just slowly build up to it. It doesn't need to be something that is like something you jump to. Um, and, and the, the, the more important things I think are along the way, learning these things about, you know, tendencies to emotionally eat or to overeat. Um, and there, and there's still plenty to work on. Even if you get to OMAD, even if you get down to your goal weight, there's going to be more stuff to, to learn about. Like, oh, I'm still doing that thing. Maybe sometimes where I like, I'm eating too fast, even at my one meal, I'm eating too fast and I'm eating too much because I'm stressed out about this thing. So, uh, so I would say baby steps, baby steps with everything. Uh, same with like, uh, if you, if you have like a step goal, working your way up to it and, and taking breaks, like sitting, like sit down, let yourself rest. If you need it, don't, don't like punish yourself. And I remember like when I was, I was definitely out of shape <laughs> and not, you know, uh, uh, and, and was obese too. So it was very difficult to, um, to really, uh, go at a long stretch of, you know, doing things. And I, so I did, I had to sit down I, I, and I needed to sit down. And I remember thinking I shouldn't need to sit down. Like this is just walking, like I'm just walking. So like, I shouldn't need it, but I let myself have it anyway. And since I did that, like, since I was able to, um, you know, be humble enough to take breaks. Uh, it actually was really good because, uh, once you start taking breaks and stuff, you, you, it's really about treating yourself nicely. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, let's see, Melissa, uh, Hmm. Sternhagen. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, do you drink zero calorie drinks during the fasting window? I, yes. Um, I, well, when I have them in the house, I do. Um, so during the fasting window, here's what I, here's what I allow myself. Uh, water, obviously ice water. Yes. Although, I mean, you might, I'm, I say obviously, but there are people out there who advocate, um, dry fasting and things like that, which I've never done. Um, but I will have unsweetened tea. I will have, like I said, coffee with half and half, which is not zero calorie. Um, I also really enjoy, uh, unsweetened flavored water. Okay. So I do not do well at all with fake sugar, like, um, Splenda, uh, aspartame, any of that stuff. It, I don't feel well after it. Like I, I like there, like it makes me, I don't know, like, uh, kind of like nauseous or like, I don't know, stuff with my stomach. Uh, I don't, I don't like it, but, uh, I do really like bubbly. And I like, there's like what there's bubbly and LaCroix and, uh, at Walmart it's called clear American, but there are two different kinds. So you have to be careful. There's one that's like, it's just called clear American. Right. There, I, and mm. then the other one is called clear American unsweetened. That's the one I get. Um, so, uh, I do enjoy that. I really think those, those types of things are really helpful for the fasting window again, because it's boring. It can be really, really boring to, to not have anything at all dur during your, your fasting window, especially in the early days, it does get easier over time to, you know, to have less of these things. Um, but you know, in, in the beginning, it's nice to have some variety. You want it to feel easy. You want it to feel enjoyable because you won't punish yourself day after day after day. Like if you're miserable, then you need to change something. You need to add a little bit of enjoyment somehow, uh, to it. And part of that can be, staying busy during the fasting window, doing things during the fasting window that you have previously felt like you don't have time for, you know, like reading or writing or doing art, um, they're uh, cleaning your house, you know, decluttering all that good stuff just stay busy. Keep a list. If, if you find yourself kind of floundering in the, um, 
the fasting window, have a list of here are some things I could do during the fasting window, brainstorm, you know, uh, right now, you know, what you could do and then have that list, you know, somewhere up, like maybe on your fridge or something. And then that way, if you are ever in that place where it's like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in the fasting window and I'm bored and I want to eat, then, you know, knock something off of that list or, or try something on that list. So, um, let's see, Meg, uh, Houghton? What is it? How Houghton? 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 Maybe it's Houghton. Um, Houghton. Houghton? Houghton? You think so? I don't know. Well, I'm sorry. I probably butchered your name. But um, why is slow weight loss preferable? Okay. I have my own theories here. Okay. My theory is, you know, and you can look at the statistics on this, but... I think the way, the why it's more preferable is I think it points to more sustainable changes that you can maintain for the rest of your life. So in other words, sure, there are some people who do, like they have drastic weight loss, like they, they do, like they change everything and they have fast weight loss. As long as they can maintain whatever it is they're doing, then yeah, the weight will stay off. The problem is when it's like, this major change and the weight comes off fast, but it's not sustainable because it's like they're miserable and like it's a crash diet. And what do you do after you crash? You know, you just end up putting the weight back on. Um, slow weight loss, I think points to just, you know, you're making these little changes and, and, and it's something you can just stick with for, for the rest of your life. I mean, that's the thing. Maintenance is forever. It, it's not, it, or well, not forever, uh, not in the literal sense, but it, it, it is until the end of your earthly life. So, um, so something to think about, like, what are the things that you can do for the rest of your life? And so, uh, and, and also with that, those things take time. The, uh, the habit changes take time. You're going to have times where you mess up and, 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 and learning how to do these things on a consistent basis just take time. So like lottery winners, too. Lo lottery winners. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah. Like lottery winners, right? Most, most of them go back to being broke. Like they have this huge influx of cash and you might think, well, their problem is solved. But no, what happens, because they don't have the money handling abilities, then they go back to being broke. I, I can't remember the exact statistic. It, it was but. too easy and the behavior didn't change. Right. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your, your, your behavior has to permanently change. So um, there you go. That's that's my answer for why it's uh, preferable. Uh, she said the second pronunciation, Houghton. Houghton. I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> I couldn't remember which one the second one. Okay. Serena's lens... Uh, says, what's the best way to reduce sugar addiction? Hmm. I have thoughts on this, and they're probably not going to be popular. But I don't like the idea of saying, like, of using language like that. Because I think it makes you weaker. And so... Uh, because what that's saying then is that sugar has power over you and sugar doesn't. And I would say one thing that helped me, uh, with, with like notions of I'm weak and food is strong, uh, is uh, okay. I'll give you an example for a while. I really thought I can't help it. I can't help how much I want to eat. Uh, you know, like I eat what I eat because that's just how, like how my programming, right? Like, and there, there's just not much I can do about that. But I asked myself, and, and this was actually a question that, that kind of came up when I was reading a couple of different books. Uh, one was called Unbroken, which is a fantastic book, um, about this guy who survived being in POW camps. Uh, and another book was called First They Killed My Father. And that was about the, um, Khmer Rouge uh, in, uh, Cambodia, uh, and stories of just terrible starvation and things like that. But I realized if I was in that situation where like we have a, a handful of rice and this is all my family has this handful of rice and we have to split that, you know, five ways or something, uh, I could have self-control. Like I wouldn't eat that whole handful of rice, I would say you have, you know, you have your fifth, you have your fifth and, and all that. And 
I so somewhere deep, deep, deep inside of me, there's a stronger person than what I'm saying, if that makes sense. So this idea that like, oh, I just can't control myself around whatever. Sure, I can, sure I can. Sure you can. I think, um, like, you have to. I think it's a good thought experiment to just in your mind create a situation and and, and say, okay, but if it was like this, then I bet I could have self control. Like if somebody said, look. Um, here's this piece of, uh, or uh, maybe like, here's this box of Oreos. And if you can just eat one Oreo and that's it, then I will give you $10,000. And, and let's say you were fasting all day. Let's try to increase the difficulty. So let's say you've been fasting all day, but you can only have one cookie and that's it. Could you do that? Could you stop at one cookie? Absolutely. You could, you could, you have it in you deep, deep down. Um, it's just that the situation is not that in real life. The situation is these things are very, very abundant, you know, like you have like tons and tons of food around. It's very easy. And we have like, and there's lots going on <laughs> just in our world, uh, that can increase anxiety and, and there's lots of depression and stuff too. So there, there's a lot going on and food, especially, you know, like, um, comfort food. It's not just sugar. It's just really any food that comforts you. Um, if you overdo it, you're going to gain weight or you're not going to lose weight. So, um, so I think it's more helpful to think in terms of, uh, figuring out how you can understand how strong you are, uh, instead of saying like, Oh, sugar's so powerful. Like you, you're stronger than sugar. Like you, you can have control over that stuff. Um, but as far as like, if you're, if you're trying to reduce sugar intake, um, don't bring it into your house. Like as far as like, especially stuff that's like the, the pre-processed stuff that is, um, really, really hard to stop on for, for yourself, whatever, whatever those things are, I would say, just don't buy it. Like, just don't bring it home. Um, I think it's more helpful to eventually learn how to eat all the things and, and just to learn how to have the, the one thing, you know, like have a Snickers instead of have three Snickers or something like that. Um, I think that's a good skill to have the ability to have a thing that is engineered to, to keep you eating, but to be able to stop just to be able to have that kind of like, okay, I know that this is like easy to eat too much of. So I will eat the right amount and then stop. Uh, so that, that's, that's my thinking on all that. Uh, and then, like I said, I, I make everything from scratch as far as like desserts and stuff. And I think that helps, um, as far as like, if you were trying to, if you're trying to have those in your life, but you, you want for whatever reason for there to be less of it, um, then, then that's one thing because it makes it harder. <laughs> so, uh, Suzanne Sparks says, when you started, what was your IF schedule and did you follow a clean fast or dirty fast? Dirty fast. The whole time. Um, and, and by dirty, I just mean half and half, uh, in my coffee and coffee whenever I wanted it, which generally was hmm, between two and four cups a day. I would say, um, most of the time it was probably three cups, um, over four cups. I usually start to feel a little anxious. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, but I, and I've got pictures, I think on my website of like, what does my coffee look like? Cause people are always asking like, what, are, you know, how much cream are you putting in that? But I don't measure it because that would drive me crazy. Um, I just make it turn the right color, which varies based on how strong the coffee is. So like if it's really strong coffee, there's going to be more half and half. Uh, and if, if it's less, strong, uh, a lighter kind of, uh, brew, then it's going to be, uh, less half and half. Uh, so there you go. Like, it, it, so I, uh, but my, but fa my fasting window, so I would say, uh, in 2015, when I was being very, very inconsistent, I had, um, like I said, when I was first starting out with intermittent fasting though, it was an eight hour window and I just pushed breakfast a little bit later. So it was like, okay, I'm not going to, I cut off my eating at 10 PM at night. Uh, and then like my first boundary was like 6 PM. And then after I did that for a while, I was like, I can do like six thirty, seven o'clock. And then it was like, I can do eight, I can do nine. And eventually I got to that point where I was like, wow, my first, you know, meal of my breakfast is basically at lunchtime. So I just kind of started having a, an early lunch. And then after a while, I was like, I think I could just have a late lunch. So I just kept pushing it gradually. So, um, one thing though, in 2015, 
I, because I had read an article, one random article somewhere on the internet said something like, oh, women shouldn't fast longer than 14 hours. Like that, you know, that's the, that's the max. And so for a long time, I was kind of stuck there. I was like, I'm not supposed to fast longer than 14 hours. So I was doing like a 1410 for quite some time uh, when I was doing it. And I, and I just started thinking, you know, like, I don't, I don't know if I believe that because I am so, uh, I'm feeling so good and, and I didn't want to mess up my hormones. Cause I thought, well, if I do that, then like, it's probably going to make weight gain, like, or weight, sorry, weight loss impossible if I mess up my, uh, my hormones. So I was like really nervous about doing anything longer than a 14 hour fast. But then I was like, you know, I think it's more dangerous for me to be obese than it is for me to fast longer than 14 hours. So I'm, I'm going to try it. And my, my deal with myself, how I got myself to like be brave enough to try it was if I have any negative symptoms, like if, if, if my cycle gets all wonky or if I just feel like something's off, I'll go back to doing shorter fast. Um, but I, so then I pushed it out. I was like pushing it out to like 16, eight and at 16, eight, I was like, yeah, this, I feel really good at, um, I would say by 2016, uh, that was when I was at like a 16, eight uh, at the beginning of that year. I was, uh, I was doing 16, eight, uh, then I pushed it to like an 18, six and then, uh, to a 24. Uh, and then at that point, that's when the kids got the stomach bug and I ended up going to OMAD. So from January, 2016, I believe until, hmm, I believe it was the beginning of April. I think that's right. Um, I went from say a 16, eight, I pushed it all the way to OMAD. So it might've been the end of, might've been, I, no, I think it, I think it was the beginning of April. So, um, so that, that is my, uh, that was my window. So, uh, let's see. Oh, wow. It's been an hour. Goodness. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I thought we were only about halfway through this. So, okay. I, well, I reckon, is that all the, the questions? I believe so. I yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, and if you would like to check out my book, The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting, uh, you can do so on Amazon. And uh, also, uh, I have a, uh, another book, The uh, oh, gosh, Overcoming Weight Loss Obstacles, which I'm going to be putting a new cover on soon. Still, I'm working on that. Uh, and I also have a young adult fantasy fiction novel called Escape from Olshek's Castle. And so you can check those out on Amazon. Uh, also on my website, uh, sixmilesofsupper.com slash my book. Ah, uh, I don't know. Books. books, my books. I don't know. I'm, I'm terrible at remembering these things, but anyway, uh, I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. Okay. My book. You're right. Yeah. My book, my, bo dash my, book. Uh, my book. Oh, my dash book. It's the worst. <laughs> You're not supposed to do stuff like that, uh, for, for the internet. There, you can just click the link. Okay. Yeah. You can click the link. Okay. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll see you guys next week.